Welcome along guys, well I'm back out on the beautiful little Tiger 900 again thanks to those lovely people at Destination Triumph, I'll put a link below uh, massive thanks to the Washington guys for dropping this bike down to me really appreciate Destination Triumph and everything they're doing with these Triumphs it's brilliant to get some Triumphs on the channel because I've really been lacking them over the years and I've, I've just realised what I've been missing out on what fantastic bikes these new Triumphs are but anyway enough gushing this is my second video on the Triumph Tiger 900 I've done a first ride review of this bike already I'll put a little card up on the right there if you haven't seen it I suggest you go and check that one out first before watching this one in this video I'm going to talk about all the things the, the top five things I love about the new 900 and the top five dislikes if you're thinking about buying one of these machines this video is a must watch So the Tiger 900, I've been riding this around for the last three or four days, making the most of this bike despite the weather. <laughs> That's one thing I love about adventure bikes. If it's been raining, the roads are wet, or even if it is raining, it's about the only bike, apart from an enduro, which I will go out and ride happily no matter what the weather. That's a great thing about adventure bikes and I've loved having this in the garage for that very reason. No matter the weather, you get out and ride. But that aside, let's talk a bit more about specifics of the Tiger 900. And what I've, first of all, let's cover the things I've loved about this bike, that my top five likes before we get on to the more negative stuff. So number one in the list. Now these are in no particular order, but they're just top, they're just five things. So number one is that new engine. Now, I know this one is probably going to be a, cause a bit of controversy. I think the die-hard Tiger fans are perhaps not going to like this new T-plane crank they have in this. So if you're not familiar with that, if you know what the Yamaha cross-plane crank is in the R1, it's basically the same as that. It's a, it's a clever firing interval of the engine to actually make it a bit more give it a bit more character and to help it off-road so what Triumph have done is they've implemented this firing interval which actually puts a bit more vibrations into the bike and I know you know adding vibrations does that add character but in this case I think it does it adds a fantastic engine note it also gives it a load of torque from very very low down the rev range so when you just absolutely want to poodle on this it's beautiful there's just instant torque available the torque figures are up about 10 percent over the old bike and you can really notice it it's right down low in the rev range for an 888 cc motor there's a lot of drive there and that's what this t-plane has brought to the bike better low down drive and a better engine sound and just a bit more overall character and i'm a big fan so that's number one number two is the equipment levels this bike is the gt pro version so it's the fully equipped road based version of this bike I'll, I'll just talk quickly about the other versions i don't want to spend too much time on that because you can actually do a whole video just talking about the different versions of this bike but this is the gt pro and it has got everything i mean everything on it heated rider and passenger seats quick shifter and a blipper the seven inch tft cruise control heated grips the only thing it doesn't have is keyless ignition but i'm not a fan of keyless ignition anyway so it doesn't have keyless ignition but that's no biggie illuminated switch gear integration with your phone for navigation even integration with your gopro to start and stop your gopro electronic preload adjustment on the rear shock i mean it's, it's a crazy amount of equipment and that is all standard on the gt pro and the gt pro is only an extra 1700 pounds over the gt not only is the engine super smooth on the gt pro you get the quick shifter and blipper it is one of the best quick shifters and blippers i have ever used it really is a case of you pull away using the clutch and then you do not have to touch that again until you stop it is super smooth any revs first to second no problems the blipper's the same 
bang it down. Gives it a real sporty feel to your ride and you just don't have to touch the clutch again. Look at this. It's just beautiful. A lot of quick shifter and blippers you feel when you're doing it, it's not, it's, you feel like you could be damaging the gearbox a little bit. You end up using them just in certain rev ranges because you know outside of those rev ranges they don't work particularly well. Not so on this one. You can use this with confidence over the entire rev range between any gears it is outstanding so the engine and the quick shifter and blipper and just the whole feel of the mechanics of the bike third in the list is the build quality of the bike the triumphs have really impressed me with their build quality i never thought that the quality was, 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 was like they are. The quality was at the level that they are. And most of the range is actually built in Thailand, I believe. So now these are the Thailand produced bikes. I don't know if the Tiger specifically is produced in Thailand, but the, the Speed Twin I rode was a, was a Thailand bike. You know, I've ridden a few of the machines made in Thailand and the quality is there. It's a shame they're not made in the UK. I mean, we'd all love to have the, the Triumphs all made in the UK, wouldn't we? But then we'd probably be paying an extra thousand pound list on every model and never be moaning they're too expensive. So you can't have it all. But for bikes made in Thailand, those who worry about build quality, honestly, even the paint finishing stuff, they seem absolutely fantastic. So it's a top marks to Triumph for build quality, not just on the Tiger but on all of the range absolutely amazing i'm actually using the uh the cali moto app i know bruce teapot one has been banging on about this cali moto app i thought i'd try it and uh i've just set a route for 100 miles circular route from my house twisties and this is what it's come up with so that's what we're following if you're wondering what i've got on the phone here it's the, i've got no association with cali moto i'm just trying out this app and so far actually i've been quite impressed with it also works fantastically in my ultimate add-ons phone did i tell you i've got a discount code of 10 percent off the ultimate add-ons products so lcr10 will give you a discount on the ultimate add-ons website so those who are moaning that they're a bit expensive get on there with a discount code you know it makes sense i need to have a look and see what my, my, my third thing was I can't remember what number four was. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Right. Was it again? Okay, number four on the list is the fact this bike comes with a 19 inch front wheel. They haven't gone for a 21 inch front wheel. I don't understand these companies who only provide a 21 inch front wheel on their bikes the 790 adventure for instance even though there's two versions of that bike a pro and a standard they both got a 21 21s on the road do spoil the handling so i love the fact that triumph have done two different ranges of bikes the the road versions with the cast 19 inch front 17 inch rear and then they do the rally versions with the 21 inch front so you know if you're going to take your adventure bike off-road obviously the suspension is all different as well you know to tie in with that so the road bikes have road setup suspension you know road travel road rebound you know sensible a sensible thing to do yeah the rally versions have a 21 inch front longer travel suspension they didn't mention anything about lakes calimoto did you <laughs> look at this but so it makes sense to me so if, your bike, if, you, if you've got no intention to take your bike off road apart from maybe the odd gravel lane which is few and far between then get the road based gt and, and the gt pro they're the ones you want they're, they're the sensible options if you want if you're thinking well actually i might i fancy doing a few lanes i want to do a little bit of off-road get the rally everyone's happy number five of my top five favorites oh sorry i wasn't waving at you love i'll send number five but five hello what was number five? Oh god i can't remember number five uh, what was number five jesus this is the worst video ever 
turning too many things at once here, trying to produce a high quality video, follow directions from the sat nav and ride a motorcycle. I'm only a man. Number five on the list is the fact that the bike is a middleweight. Now, yeah, I know, when did a 900cc motorcycle become a middleweight? But in the adventure bike class, it is. This is a middleweight bike, like it or not, this is a middleweight. And what I like about this bike is it's not too physically big. I'm a big guy, I'm 6'2". I'd probably look a little bit big on this compared to if I was riding a, you know, a 1250 GS or an Africa Twin. It's not humongous, but I like that. If I, if I've, when I've got the Africa Twin in the garage, it literally takes up half my garage. I have room for nothing else <laughs> in the garage apart from that bike. I might as well have a car in there, it's humongous. This fits in there alongside the other bikes, it's not ridiculously big, and I like that. I, I don't want a humongous thing. I think those big bikes, once you're riding them, the weight disappears, they feel lovely. But you've still got to manoeuvre them around, you've still got to get your leg over them, you've still got to keep them in your garage, and they're just massive. I don't think there's any need for those bikes to be quite so big. This isn't as big. This is incredibly comfortable. It feels like a big bike when you're riding it. It doesn't feel like you're on a tiny. It doesn't feel any difference in size to the Africa Twin when you're actually on it. You only notice that when you're off it, that it's a smaller, neater, lighter bike. And uh, yeah, I like that. I really like that. So number five of my top five favorites is the fact it's a sensible size. I'm adventuring today. I'm fully adventuring here. We're, t we're testing this bike out absolutely properly. Grunt, cross plane grunt, <laughs> then a sharp right. Right, on to the bad points. Now, th th there's no real bad points about this. There's nothing glaringly wrong with this bike at all. But I just wanted to come up with five things which I'd like to see improved. Five things which have bugged me. They may not even bug anyone else, but five bugbears that I've found. It may not affect you, but they affect me. Uh, and I've got no clue what they are now. <laughs> so number one on my bugbears is the fact that the bike forgets things. It's got the memory of a goldfish. When you turn it on and off, the heated grips all turn off, your seat turns off. Again, I've just noticed the heated grips have gone off because I just turned the bike off back there to check my list of <laughs> top five favourites. I've got to turn them back on again. The seat has turned itself off, so let me turn that on again as well. It's just, you know, that don't turn, leave them on. I'll soon notice if I want it on or not, I'll switch them off. You know, the, the BMWs, they remember your settings, they remember the heated grips are on. And it's, it's not just to do with the equipment, it's also when you're in the, in the rider mode, if you go into the configurable rider mode and you want to turn off the traction control, maybe you're going off-road and you want to put it in the off-road mode, turn the bike on and off, it will forget that and it will put you back into the road mode again. I don't know if it's Triumph being over careful, over cautious that no one has an accident and forgot they've turned off the anti-wheelie or whatever or, or the traction control, you know, but it's annoying. It's a little bugbear that annoys me. Another thing which is a little bit annoying along the same lines is the fact you've got to pull the clutch in before you start the bike. You have to pull the clutch and then start it. So you've got to use two hands. I'm not launching a nuclear missile Triumph. I don't have to have two keys in different slots. Just, just let me start the bike without pulling the clutch. That annoys me. If I'm manoeuvring the bike around the garage and I just need to start it while I'm off it just to take it up a hill or something, I've got to take both, I've got to grip both hands and, and, and use, the, it's annoying. Don't make me faff unnecessarily. <laughs> That's all I'm asking. Uh, number two, I've got no clue. No clue what number two was. Certainly not that quick shifter and blipper. Lovely. Yeah, yep, 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 yep. That's a silly one, isn't it? Yes. Okay, let's do that again. Number two on the dislike list is, personally, I would like the bike to be a little bit more sporty in the riding position. It's a little bit too comfortable. Like the, the 1250 GS, the Africa Twin, they've got a much more sporty feel to the handling. So is the 790 Adventure, it feels more sporty. 
This is more like the V-Strom. You know, your legs are really at, at 90 degrees. Your knees are at 90 degrees. You're very upright. You, you, you're basically sat, you know, you, you're, I could be sat at my kitchen chair at home, at my, at my kitchen table having my breakfast. It's that type of position, which is fine. You can get used to it. You can work around it if you want to get sporty by going more on the rear brake into the corners and stuff. But personally, I'd like it to have more of a sporty feel because let's face it, I'm a bit of a hooligan. Number three is the fact that the screen is great. <laughs> Seven inch, perfect visibility, no reflections off it, very easy to read, but it's a little bit, I don't like the layout of it. I don't like the ref counter in particularly. I just don't know why you just can't have a more convention. But can you tell what revs this bike is doing now? Really, easily? No, you can't. Even though you've got two separate rev counters and then these bars at the... It's all nonsense. It's all gobbledygook. It's all too futuristic and stylized. Just give me a rev counter. Have you seen the BMW rev counter? It's amazing. It's beautiful. You can easy to read. I, I don't like that. I'm sorry. I don't like it. No. Is that number four? Oh, God. Back to the list again. Oh, my God. I'm going to put ET grips on again. Let's call this number three. <laughs> I don't know. Is it number three? Is it number four? Oh, I've lost count. Number three? Now this one again is, is a personal thing. And it is really the colour of the bikes. This red, you know, it's burgundy. I mean, it's a bit old manny. There's nothing particularly exciting about the colour schemes. I do quite like that, that green the rally's in. That green, sort of British racing-y green colour. Yes, give me that on the road based versions. I don't want this burgundy red and well, I can't even remember what the other un uninspiring colour is, but give me some funkier colours. You know, is there a nice black option? I don't think so. It might be actually, but I've not seen any of these colours which look particularly good. They're a little bit drab and the bike deserves to look nice. It has something, look at the Africa Twin, that white paintwork. The white frame with the blue and the red looks lovely. Same with the GS, that white multicolored paintwork. It's all burgundy with a bit of silver. Oh, it's a bit dull, Triumph. You could do better. The last thing on the list is really clutching at straws a little bit. <laughs> it's the rear light. The rear light is set down. I'll flash a video up. It's sat down into the tail tidy. So if you want to get a smaller tail tidy to improve the looks of the bike, you can't because the tail light is sort of way down into Why have they moved the tail light down there? Leave the tail light where it was, behind the back of the bike, behind the seat, and then we can fit a tail tidy. We could smarten up the rear end of our motorcycles. We don't want the tail light in part of the tail tidy or the tail nasty as they come standard. We want to be able to change that. And that sort of makes it a whole lot more complicated to put a nicer looking tail on the bike. It's a little gripe, you know, I'm clutching the straws a little bit, but it's something that pointed out to me and I thought, no, no, I don't like that. Well, there we go, guys. There's your top five likes, your top five dislikes. The bike's amazing. A lot of those dislikes, it's just personal preference, really. And, you know, there's nothing seriously wrong with this motorcycle. It's a beautiful machine. I'll be more than happy to have one of these in my garage. I think that the price point, you know, everything about it, they, they've hit the nail on the head with this bike, Triumph Half. You know, and the changes from the old Tiger, which was a great bike. The old Tiger was amazing. It's only better now. More lighter, more powerful, better equipped. What is there not to like? So there we are. It just remains for me to say a massive thanks to Destination Triumph for lending me the bike for a few days. Really appreciate it. When a bike is brand new out like this, you know, they're taking this off of their fleet. You know, this is new out. There's a lot of interest in this machine and for them to give it up and give it to me is, uh, is really appreciated. So massive thanks to Destination Triumph. Please check them out. If you're looking into getting yourself a Triumph, you will not find a better dealer than Destination Triumph. Well, that's it. Thanks, guys. Thanks for watching. I will see you next time. Take care. Ride safe. I love you. This is Power Level 1. 
which is full power. <laughs> I told you I was scared about that. Whoa! I've never dropped a bike before in my life. Whoa! <laughs> that's it. That's it. <laughs> Listen to this. 